Chase Elliott will start from the pole in Sunday's Cup race at Atlanta Motor Speedway after a random draw Thursday. Elliott, who won at Charlotte Motor Speedway on May 28 and was racing Joey Logano for the lead last weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway before crashing, will be joined on the front row by Eric Almirola. Logano will start third. Kyle Busch starts fourth. Clint Boyer starts fifth. Brad Keselowski, who won last weekend at Bristol, starts sixth in the 40-car field. Click here for cup starting lineup. Sunday's race is scheduled to take the green flag at 3.25 p.m. Eastern Time. The field was determined through a random draw of the following groups. Race time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time Sunday. Track, Atlanta Motor Speedway, Hampton, Georgia, 1.54 mile speedway. Length, 325 laps, 500.5 miles. Stages, Stage 1 ends on lap 105. Stage 2 ends on lap 210. TV coverage, Fox. Radio, Performance Racing Network, also Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Streaming, Fox Sports app, subscription required, GOPRN.com and Sirius XM for audio, subscription required. Next Xfinity race, June 6 at Atlanta, 163 laps, 251.2 miles, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox. Next Truck Series race, June 6 at Atlanta, 130 laps, 200.02 miles, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on FS1. Homestead Miami Speedway plans to host up to 1,000 military personnel, first responders and their household members as guests to the track's June 14 Cup race, according to a proposal approved by Miami-Dade County Mayor Carlos Jimenez. The mayor's office provided NBC Sports with a copy of the executive summary of Homestead Miami Speedway's proposal. With more than a week before the race, the track's plans could change based on the COVID-19 pandemic. Andy Slater of Fox Sports 640 first reported the track would be allowed to have military members at the June 14 event. Those admitted would not be charged. They would be the only people allowed in the grandstands. They would be the first people to sit in the stands for a NASCAR race since the season resumed in May. Fans could watch both Charlotte races last month from Turn 1 condos but were not allowed any other access. No tickets for the general public will be made available for any of the races at Homestead Miami Speedway next weekend. Those admitted will not be allowed in the infield. They must undergo health screening before entering the facility, including a temperature check. They also will be required to wear a cloth mask and comply with other other preventive measures, including social distancing in the stands. The track will have a sequenced ingress, egress procedure to control entry to and exit from the facility to minimize large concentrations of people. There will be multiple hand washing and hand sanitizing stations throughout the entrances and concourse. No tailgating will be allowed. Parking will be allowed in every other spot. Guests will be prohibited from bringing coolers. Limited menus will be available. No merchandise will be sold on site. Here's the status of upcoming races for fans. June 6-7, Atlanta Motor Speedway, no spectators for any of its races. June 10th, Martinsville Speedway, no spectators allowed. June 13-14, Homestead Miami Speedway, up to 1,000 military personnel, first responders and household members allowed only for June 14th Cup race. General public not allowed at event. June 20 to 21, Talladega Super Speedway, no spectators for any of its races. June 26 to 28, Pocono Raceway, no spectators for any of its races, including the Cup races on June 27 and June 28. July 4 to 5, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, no spectators for its races, including the July 4 doubleheader of the Indy Car Race and Xfinity Race on the road course. July 9-12, Kentucky Speedway, no spectators for any of its races. July 15, Charlotte Motor Speedway, All-Star Race, options for fan entry are being evaluated in consultation with state and local health officials, but no decisions have been finalized, according to track media release. July 18-19, Texas Motor Speedway, Texas Motor Speedway and NASCAR have developed a comprehensive plan and continue to work with state and local officials to determine the size and scope of the number of race fans who will be able to attend the weekend's events, according to track statement. 
July 23-25, Kansas Speedway. We continue to work closely with state and local officials to determine if it may be possible to have fans attend our races in July, according to track statement. August 2, New Hampshire Motor Speedway, it's unclear at this time if fans will be allowed access for the race, according to track statement. The Aka Menards Series West on Friday announced the date for its return to racing. The series, which last competed February 20 in Las Vegas, will hold a double header at the Utah Motorsports Campus in Airda, Utah, 30 miles from Salt Lake City, on Friday, June 26. That will be followed by a race at California's Irwindale Speedway on Saturday, July 4. The doubleheader on Utah's 2.2-mile road course will consist of two 30-lap races. The races will be run per state and local guidelines, but in a statement on its website, the track announced it will would offer 500 spectator tickets for the event. All guests' temperatures will be taken at the gate, and social distancing rules will be in force. All UMC staff will wear masks, and public touchpoints will be disinfected on an ongoing basis. The July 4 race at Irwindale will be a 125-lap event with no pit stops. The race will be limited to essential race personnel only and no spectators per state and local guidelines. The season opening winner of the February 20 race in Las Vegas was Sam Mayer. The Aka Menards Series East returns to racing on June 13 at Toledo Speedway. After racing Monday at Bristol, the Xfinity Series is back in action Saturday at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The race follows the Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series race earlier in the afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on FS1. This marks the first race in this year's Dash 4 Cash. Noah Gragson, Chase Briscoe, Brandon Jones and Harrison Burton will compete for a $100 OO bonus. Whoever finishes highest claims the money. Here's the info for Saturday's Xfinity race. All times are Eastern. Start, David Bruton Smith, CEO of Sonic Automotive, Inc., and Echo Park Automotive, Inc., will give the command to start engines at 4.35 p.m. The green flag is scheduled to wave at 4.47 p.m. Pre-race, garage access health screening begins at 8 a.m. Teams are assigned specific times. Engine prime and final adjustments are at 2.30 p.m. Drivers report to their cars at 4.20 p.m. The invocation will be given at 4.27 p.m. by Chuck Christie, chaplain at Northside Hospital Gwinnett. The national anthem will be performed at 4.28 p.m. by Gabby Green, COVID-19 survivor and RNBSN Covenant Hospital. Distance, the race is 163 laps, 251.02 miles, around the 1.54 mile oval. Stages, stage 1 ends on lap 40. Stage 2 ends on lap 80. TV, radio, Fox will televise the race. Its coverage begins at 4.30 p.m. Performance Racing Network's coverage will begin at 4 p.m. and also can be heard at goprn.com. Sirius XM NASCAR Radio will carry PRN's broadcast. Forecast, the Wonderground.com forecast calls for cloudy conditions with a high of 85 degrees and a 20% chance of rain at the race's start. Last race, Noah Gragson won Monday's race at Bristol Motor Speedway after late contact and a wreck involving teammate Justin Allgaier. Gragson beat Chase Briscoe and Brandon Jones. Last race at Atlanta, Christopher Bell led 142 of 163 laps and beat Cole Custer and Justin Allgaier. Lineup, set by rule book and random draw. Click here for Xfinity starting lineup. The drumbeat toward this fall's Southern 500 throwback weekend at Darlington Raceway has started, courtesy of Stuart Haas Racing and Clint Boyer. Boyer's number 14 Ford will take inspiration from the number 42 car that NBC Sports analyst Kyle Petty drove in 1990 when he competed for Sapco Racing and was sponsored by Peak Antifreeze. Boyer will be sponsored by Peak in the race. It's the latest Darlington throwback to Petty's career. Kyle Larson drove a mellow yellow scheme in 2015 and Ryan Blaney drove his Wood Brothers racing scheme in 2017. In 1990, Petty claimed one cup win. He led 433 of 492 laps at Rockingham Speedway. It was one of his three wins at Rockingham from 1990 to 92. 
the Southern 500 is tentatively scheduled to open the playoffs on September 6 on NBCSN.